So this is uh, Iramari, Yacht Iramari, don't know this show. Um, never heard of it, 64 meter I believe, 63 meter. It's, it is for charter, I think it's $650,000 a, a week or 650,000 euros as well, which is the same price, which is interesting. It was built by Sunrise Yachts. Okay, so this boat is leaving. I can see them breaking down the gangway. They got rid of the garbage, broke down the gangway, and there's a chap up on the bridge ring there in the uniform. I suspect he might be the pilot. So yeah, these guys are leaving pretty shortly. So that's where the van's, the van's here, they got the stevedores in, who are gonna drop the lines. The lines have been slackened already. Uh, they're breaking down the gangway, as I said before. And there's a lot of activity on board, so you can tell that they're about to leave, so yeah. So you can see there the gangway, uh, they've taken all the rails off it. So that's gonna, it's automatic, that'll be, that'll be retracted into the, into the hull there. And uh, yeah, they're all, everything's happening right now. So what's gonna be happening on board right now? You got the engineers are going to be uh, in the engine room. It's going to get be getting the engine, starting the engines, getting them ready, handing them up to the bridge. Uh, that's assuming that uh, on, on the smaller boats like this, the the captain can actually start the engines from the bridge. But usually, what happens is the chief engineer will be in the engine room. He will start the engines and he will uh, hand them up to the bridge, and then he'll call the bridge and say, uh, "Engines ready." So the captain knows that he's got the engines when he needs them. So. After that, what happens is, what they should do, is the um, captain will test all of the uh, engines. So he'll test the thrust on the engines. So he'll just, uh, he'll have an observer and he'll, and he'll give some thrust to the engine, one engine, port engine, starboard engine, forwards and backwards, and they'll look for the wash in the water to check that they're working. He'll do the same with the bow thrusters. So we'll testing bow thruster. So he'll, he'll call to the bow or to the stern bow thruster and stern thruster and they'll call them and say I need um, I want to test the thrusters look for wash and then they'll call back yes that's working um, so the captain's up on the bridge there on the bridge wing now they start to drop the lines the stevedores here dropping the lines so they've all lot the testing that I've just mentioned obviously already been done so they're gonna start dropping the lines they've already got the radar running which is a bit of bit naughty yeah you're not really supposed to run your radar because uh, it's not, uh, it's not the done thing. So you're not supposed to turn them off until you get onto the breakwater. Turn them on, sorry, until you get onto the breakwater. Because uh, you're obviously you're firing uh, x-rays all around this port now. And they've got both of them running as well. So there you go, there's the lines getting dropped in the water. So they always try to not get them wet if at all possible. And he's done a good job there. So he left the, he's left the, the gangway out for that reason. Uh, so he's got the last line on, the stern line. You just have to drop the spring lines and then they'll be ready to go. The, ca the uh, pilot or the captain, I'm not sure, up on the bridge there, he's got a hat, he's wearing a Panama hat. <laughs> okay, so now they're starting to retract the uh, gangway. Yeah, it looks like the female there uh, is a part of the deck, deck department, which is kind of unusual. It's not unheard of. He's getting ready with the line. They're just waiting for the for the order from the bridge. So, the, so all of the lines are, are released uh, on the captain's say so. He'll ask for which line he wants to be released next. So one of the things the captain has to do uh, when he's on the, when he wants to operate the boat from the bridge wing. He uh, he'll go to the controls on the on the main conning station, and he will he will send those uh, the controls out to whichever wing port or starboard bridge wing, uh, and and then he takes control once it gets to the bridge wing. He, then he takes that control that he sent out from the center console to that bridge wing, and then he's got controls on the bridge wing. All right, so uh, they've dropped all the lines now, and they're pulling away. So yeah, a yacht of this size will have a, a pilot on board, so he will get, he'll come on, probably just walk on from the gangway there, and then he'll get, he'll, when he leaves, the, a pilot boat will come out to collect them, and that's a requirement, and it's a bit of a con really, you don't, I mean, they, they aren't knowledgeable of the area, of the port, where the, where the um, shallow parts are and all that stuff, but most of these ports now, the, the captains have been in and out of these for years, and they could do it easily without pilot 
but it's money for the port so they uh, they keep doing it there are some places obviously that um, are quite treacherous and they do need pilots and some places even they'll even give you a waiver so they say that the pilot can actually uh, sorry the captain can actually uh, become certified to be his own pilot um, and they'll say yeah well you don't have to have it but you still have to pay the fee so it's like a waiver so you don't have to have them on board but you still gotta pay so you're gonna have to pay not to have a pilot all right so you can see the wash from the propellers there he's gonna do a, a 180 I would imagine so you've got um, you'll have someone on the stern someone on the bow uh, the captain will be calling down and he'll, as he does the turn, he'll be asking, uh, "What's uh, how, how many how many meters to whatever obstacle might be there?" And they'll call back and tell him how much space he's got, because obviously from the bridge, he can't see. Now, he may have cameras, so he can he can use the cameras, but the cameras not as good as uh, as the eyeball. So. He, even though he has cameras to assist him, he may have cameras to assist him, he'll still, uh, he'll still call down on the radio. So you can see uh, all the fenders there, they're all hanging on the side of the deck. And if I zoom in, you see they've got a little fender protector there. And that sits on the side of the vessel. And it's, got, um, it's, it's lined with a, a, like a, a fair type stuff. So it protects the vessel from getting scratched. It also allows you to move where you want to put the fenders without having all of these fender hooks all the way along the side of the boat, which look ugly. So these things will get put on as you come into port and then they'll hang the fenders from them. So when you go out to sea, uh, the fenders get pulled up and then, uh, and then they take those hooks and they hang them in the, and they, they stow them. Oh, that noise is the bow thruster. You can hear that. And there's your, there's your deckhand on the bow. If the captain needs it, he will call him and ask him uh, how, much, how far is it to the nearest obstacle. All right, so I've uh, raced down to the bit where I think he's gonna make the turn here. Captain's still on the bridge ring, of course. He has all the controls on the bridge ring that he would have inside. Now, one tip for all captains who may be watching, the bow thruster controller must be centered, otherwise it will keep thrusting. You have to feel for that click. Once it's uh, centered, then it's, then it's stopped thrusting. Just a handy tip there. All right, so he's making his turn now. So you see the, whoops, you see the, the, the girl on the back there, she's looking over the edge, the captain will be communicating with her, asking her how, how much distance they have, when well, they've got plenty obviously. Uh, same on the bow, it doesn't look like they have plenty, when you're on the, up on the bridge ring there, it doesn't actually look like you have that much room, so you do rely on the people to give you the feedback. So there you go, he's making this turn. He can, once he's, uh, once, he's uh, once he's finished his turn, he starts moving forward, he'll most likely leave the bridge ring and go back onto the bridge. Once they get out to sea, the, the deckhands will uh, remove all the fenders put them away, deflate the ones that are the inflatable ones and, uh, and uh, put them away into storage. And there we go, this starting to move off. Past Andromeda, which is massive in the background there. There she goes. In full charter mode, you see all the uh, awnings are up and the, the gazebos and all that kind of stuff up on the back there. All the plants are out. I see some of the girls up on the on the back deck there are in the in their uh, boss on uniform. So it would appear the owners on board.
Or they're going to pick them up somewhere. That was an impromptu um, talk about the boat leaving. I, I, I was walking by and I, re I recognised I was talking about them, how they emptied the garbage and stuff like that. And then I realised they were actually leaving. They're starting to break down the gangway. So I thought, well, great opportunity to stay and talk you through it. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that. So, I'm so glad I brought my hat. I actually forgot my sunglasses, unbelievably. And uh, yeah, plenty more of that to come. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Give this a thumbs up. Uh, any questions below? All right, guys. So uh, uh, see you soon. All right.